Paddy, let's talk about Donegal, your, your home county. Um, and we'll start at no better place to start off than Orn McNeilish. He, he wasn't yeah. there this year, and of course there was, um, there was a friend of his got uh, killed tragically mm. at the start of the year, um, you know, when Guido were on their run, and he, he opted out of football mm. for the mm. year, which is totally understandable, oh, probably yeah. wants to get away from it for a while. It's not that big of a deal in the grand yeah. scheme of things. He, he does look like he's coming back, though. Well, uh, it's still 50-50. Uh, there was a couple of days ago, the various media platforms in Donegal said, you know, coming out that it'll be 10 days before he makes his decision, which still is only three or four days away. Now he's playing a little bit of soccer. It's very much 50-50 at the moment. Look, it's huge and it's on everybody's lips. Now Declan Boner has announced a couple of young, exciting players coming in to the squad again. But to be honest with you, and they're all really talented guys, Donny Gall need Oren Manelis. Um I mean, he's you know, a playmaker, I, isn't he? He's a phenomenal footballer. You know, obviously Michael Murphy's God and Donny Gall, okay. And we won't get into a ruction now, but that's well, no, no, nobody on. like he. Play, he's a ten out of ten in every single game, and no one can say otherwise. That seems to be the case. <laughs> <laughs> no, on a total censorship on every Donny Gall player. Look, Oren Manelis, There was kind of an art of going around. Sometimes he blows hot and cold, but I can mm. tell you, you want Oren Manelis on the pitch. Uh, Neve Connell done well against him, but on the second day he was sublime. He's an awesome player. He leaps like time, yeah. a salmon in the air. And I think the big thing is, when Donny Gall were missing Paddy Brady a couple of years ago when he had that bad injury, and a lot was left to Jamie Brennan, okay? And I suppose the, uh, uh, the opposing teams could man-mark Jamie Brennan. But then yeah. Paddy McBrady comes back last year, and then you find with a young guy coming on, Oshin Gallen, who's a very good player, the opposition teams then have to worry about two or three players. But if you get in Oren Manilas, that's another one. He can play midfield, he can play half forward, you could throw him inside if things aren't working. He's definitely in the top five, you know, you have Michael Murphy, Ryan McHugh, Paddy McBrearty, Owen Van Gallagher, Oren Manilas, he's he's a beautiful, beautiful footballer. I remember meeting the joint Mayo managers a couple of years ago and they said he was one of the main guys we were, we were going out to look after, you know, because he's so, so talented. Because when he does blow hot, he's... He's unplayable, mm. and he's so he's a beautiful player to watch. Beautiful, beautiful footballer. He's twenty-seven now. He has taken a year out previously, hasn't he? A few years ago. Yeah, a couple of years ago. And is it that football? He can, to some degree. He obviously loves it, but to some degree, he can take or leave it. Perhaps, yeah. And I suppose, look, there's a big difference between club and county. You know, as oh, you know, and yeah, yeah. I mean, whereas probably it's not at the same level. And I suppose it's unfortunate in a way, Shane, that. People don't really know what's going on either, and we, everyone makes comments, and that's fine for us in the media, but as you rightly said a few minutes ago, there, are, there is more to life than football as well. He just so happens to be a fantastic footballer. <laughs> yeah, He's he not really getting is. paid 40000 a week. He's not on a contract. There are bigger things out there, you know, and listen, we just hope that he comes back. Um, and hope that he's in a good place to come back and that he's back enjoying his football because... As I said, when he's on form, he's 10 out of 10. And I think, apart from Dublin, who can maybe miss two or three key players, I think Donegal, Kerry, my old Tyrone, I think to go on to the next level, mm. I think they need all the races on the pitch. Because even last year, who were the one team that could probably afford three or four serious injuries and still go on and win the All-Ireland? Dublin. Who didn't get three or four serious injuries? Dublin. The rest of the teams were picking them up as they went along. At Dublin were coasting through. Like they, yeah. Yeah, obviously, Leinster is a cakewalk for them. Mm -hmm. Then they go through their Super 8s where they can put out a B team for the last day against Tyrone. Then they've got their nice break, whereas Mayo have played seven games in eight weeks. They come in battered and bruised, having played your Donegal the week before. Yeah. So it's not exactly a level playing field either. And it does mean t other teams are going to get more injuries when Dublin are coasting. Yeah, but the Mayo fans will be the first to say, look, had they went on and won Connacht, they would have had a nice little break as well. Mm. Um, the Super 8s definitely need to, yeah, to be getting, yeah, no, yeah, getting yeah. through Connacht is, is a lot harder than like Mayo should be getting through it or getting closer to getting through, but still, in all, like Leinster is a joke for Dublin, it is, and you know, it's it's becoming I won't say a parody, but like at the end oh, of it the is. day, it's, it's full it's, on, is it's a joke, nobody looks forward to it. Yeah. Everyone, like, we now know for the next number of years that Dublin are guaranteed to win it, yeah, they're guaranteed probably. Definitely to win the next nine out of ten. They'll fall asleep someday, and yeah. a Kildare Meath will catch them. It'll there'll be some kind of a pitch invasion or something. Yeah. Remember <laughs> Wexford beat Kilkenny one time when they were oh, unbeatable, four. unbeatable in Leinster, and, and then they lost the final. <laughs> and they lost the final. Yeah, Leinster, Leinster's. It's it's, it's 
turning into a joke, mm. really, you know. And there's, a, there's a player you mentioned there earlier, and I was thinking of the Super 8s, and I'm pretty sure it was against uh, Kerry who came on and scored those points, Oshin Gallen. A player being targeted by AFL clubs, like he, he isn't really someone you'd want to lose, is he? Yeah, no, absolutely, and fabulous club player as well, and very, very talented, very elusive. Kind of came on the scene nationally for Donegal when he came on in the league final against mm. Meath and kick four or five sublime points from play. And the great thing about him is he's a young lad, 18, 19. He misses one chain, what does he do? Has a pop again. He's fearless. He's very, very talented. And yeah, he had, he went, it's called a combine. So you go for two weeks to Australia, kind of like trials, but I'm led to believe there were a lot of players over there. And it probably doesn't make the headlines all the time. A lot of guys go over for this and a lot come back mm -hmm. as well. But he'd done an interview a couple of months ago when he came back and he said he's fully concentrating now on Donegal. And I think that's the thing about Donegal for years. You know, Donegal always produced one or two very good forwards and sublime forwards at the moment. It's definitely their forte. Like if Paddy McBrarty, Oshin Gallen, the aforementioned Orman Manilis, if he does play... Jamie Brennan was unmarkable in Ulster last year, and obviously Michael Murphy can come in and out. So it's a good, that area of the field is less problematic, can yeah. we say? Why, so you mentioned Jamie Brennan there, and he was sublime in, in Ulster, really brilliant. Probably came off the rails from a small bit as the Super 8s went on. Didn't seem to, and now maybe you disagree, but I felt that his form wasn't quite at that same level because I was excited to see him play in Croke Park. I thought, I really do think he is the real deal and continue to think he's the real deal. But maybe that's just a symptom of, in general, Donegal sort of ground, ground to a halt as the season got to the very end. It was um, it was a strange one for a lot of players, you know. Jamie just he was so closely watching the Super Eights, and it's funny he got a little bit of criticism after the Kerry game, the drawn game, mm. and said he didn't show up. He still won one or two vital frees at the end, you know, and he was still there. Um, he's a confidence player, like probably ninety eight percent of players. And look, his form was ridiculous in Ulster. Yeah. I mean, he, he really, really was. He was a guaranteed All Star at that stage. He was a guaranteed All Star, and as you mentioned, the season unraveling and. Nobody likes to make excuses, and Declan Boner won't make any. None of those guys will, but the injury toll chain was becoming farcical at the end. Mm. I mean, take take the Kerry game, for example. And that we, was we, we, we spoke that day. Neil yeah. McGee, your full-back. Paddy McGrath was out. Then Owen Band Gallagher, you know, had that very serious injury. Paddy McGrath, uh, my own club man. The animal. Is that 30, his 30, 30, 30, 30, 31. Like, like... Paddy McGrath was having the best year of his life. Like obviously he was brilliant in 2012, but he was in the form of his life. Owen Van Gallagher, I mean, what a class, class footballer. Mm. I felt personally robbed of an all-star the previous year. You know, again, he's up, down, he's up, down. Such a bad injury. Neil McGee actually had a good <coughs> club championship this year, and he was missing as well. You're missing three first-choice defenders. Mm. Where are Kerry's strongest? Up front. So, And then we had, of course, Hugh McFadden. And Jason McGee went off that day. The two midfielders with injuries. Then came the Mayo game. And, you know, there's a lot of talk. Donegal were brilliant last year. And people say, oh, they bought, it was a bottle job in the Super 8s again. They went to Mayo. Mayo were getting ridiculed by their own supporters. It was monsoon season that day in Castle Bar. Donegal had six or seven first team players out with injuries. Away from home. With that partisan supporter. You know Mayo better than anybody. And it was just, I firmly believe it was just a bad day at the office. I, I really, really do. I think it was a combination of those things. Soft penalty for Michael Murphy. Not at all. Will you go away? Shane, you need to stop listening to Joe Brawley <laughs> and these guys. It was 100% <laughs> penalty. I, I don't know how that... He pulled him down. That was a penalty. The problem is it's not given in every game. Mm. But it was a penalty. It's not soccer. We need to introduce you to Michael Murphy, Shane. You, know, you need to get I Michael mean, Murphy good on few times. Okay, I, okay. I did a piece of him before. No, I think he's a great fella. But actually... <laughs> He's after turning 30 now. Do you think he's as effective now as he was in previous years? I honestly believe, and I'm not just saying this, I think last year, and this is going to sound ridiculous, uh, I don't know how many people in Donegal would agree with me, I think 2019 was as good as he's ever been in the green and gold yeah. jersey. He's how just much has he changed over the years, by the way, in terms of like even how he's used by the manager? Yeah, look, he, I suppose in the early years... He, they could play him inside. Um, Donegal had a very strong midfield that time. Jim McGuinness moved him in and out. If you go back to 2012, uh, 14, particularly the Cork game, yeah, you could move him inside more. You could bring him out more because you had a guy called Neil Gallagher there in the middle, Rory Cavanagh. Mm. Neil Gallagher, his own club man, you know, 
it was like synchronised swimming with those two guys. Neil picks it up at Club Ann County and launches launches it in. His work rate is his work rate's actually it's it's ridiculous. Mm. Um, I just as a as someone with no skin in the game, when I see him standing on his own forty five protecting, I just think this is the last place I would. Or sorry, if I'm the opposition, I'm delighted to see him there. And I've asked club lads about that, and they are too. But at the same time, and you know, there's a lot more intuitive people out there in me than Gaelic games and I've often asked people why don't you leave them inside and they'll say well look there'll be three four bodies around him and it's just a waste of time because you know what his problem is his problem is he's an unbelievable midfielder as well mm. that is actually he's 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 awesome around that area he, he like he's sublime and he takes so many players out of the with game with the attack and mark now you're thinking <laughs> mm, maybe get him back inside again I think we're going to get him for another 15 years hopefully I think we're going to see a 45 year old Michael Murphy I, a lot of people are giving out about the attack and mark I love it because he moved inside last year against Meath and it was just catch catch well, catch this is the thing like because <laughs> if he wins that the attack and mark and therefore he can stand up and take free Sure, like he could be getting all sorts of scores in a game. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to be a sad day in Donegal when Michael Murphy ever retires. He, but you know, it's not only that. And I know people are obviously at that level; they love football. But Michael Murphy is actually obsessed with football. Mm. I think he's going to be like a Jimmy Barry Murphy type in Cork, where he's going to be involved and heavily immersed in Donegal GA forever. I can see him. You know, he's with LYAT coaching. They love him. Um, they won a trophy last year. I can just see him when he finishes, maybe going with the underage and into the seniors. I can just see him being involved forever. He's he is really an ambassador up there. He's he's just he's loved and you know I know this is away from football and look a lot of the top herders and footballers do it, but he's just so good with kids as well. And he he's just a, he's a great fella and he's so unassuming as well. He's actually very good at analysis. Um, I remember oh, yeah. being up with Airsport doing. Um, I think it was a double header in the Donegal Championship at the end of 2017. And during the game, like I had the headset on, and I was just listening to him do co-commentary and analyse it. And I was just like, yeah, I'm understanding this game more as he's talking, as it's going on live. So yeah. I have a feeling we'll see him Look, there. when Jim McGuinness came in in 2011, he put Michael Murphy captain straight away. And that time, you know, you would guys like Kevin Cassidy there, and you know, you had other big, big leaders who were around a long, long mm. time. And he puts in a young cub, essentially, and Michael Murphy, you know, and... It, Incredible, like for such for such a young fella. Apparently, his voice in the dressing room is sublime. Like I think Chris McNulty wrote a couple of months ago, and when this article came out, he said Michael Murphy would slit someone's throat to get a ball. That he's 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 you know he's he's nuts about football, but he's so important to Donegal. He's so mm. important in everything Donegal does. So you you were probably a young lad in '92 when um, Donegal won that first All Ireland race. Six, nearly seven, yeah, nearly yeah. seven. Um, You're a few years younger than me, so only yeah, I know it's the beard. I need to shave the beard. People <laughs> well, are putting a few extra years on me. I'm sure that's kind of like rose tinted glasses or whatever. But like, can you remember that and can compare and contrast it with 2012? Yeah, I remember Martin McHugh said tw- 1992 was for the older generation in Donegal. Mm. 2012 was for the younger generation in Donegal. Donegal didn't win their first Ulster Championship shape until 1972. Yeah, like 1972, you know, uh, subsequently won nine, it's ten in total. That's ridiculous. Like, they had five Ulster titles when Jim McGuinness came in. Jim McGuinness was obsessed with this word tradition. He actually, you know, and I'd say still thinks about it, he wants Donegal in 18, 1920 Ulster titles, and he always used to refer to that as well about building tradition yeah, because yeah. he played in a period, his formative years, I suppose. In the county jersey, he was watching Tyrone and Armagh and these teams, probably a little bit later in his career, and he was like, we want some of that as well. And to be honest with you, and going back to him, and I suppose it's a good point to bring up, he's the Neve Connell man, McGuinness changed so much of the mentality in Donegal. Mm. He really, really did. He studied in Kerry, they think highly of him down there, and he always used to speak about Kerry as well, he'd do a graph for them, and what he'd done for Donegal football, and in a way, and I know he went on to other pastures, a very, just a huge loss for Donegal. Mm. I have no doubt he would have, even if he wasn't managing the seniors, he would have some other, he would have some other, you know, things in place for the county and underage. And he'd, 
he wasn't just a dreamer, he was pragmatic, he put plans in place and he was a fantastic guy. So, and he was there of course in 92 himself and then went 19 years without winning an Ulster Championship. It's too long, like, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's too long. And like, you know that, that period where Kevin Cassidy was dropped off the panel and, and that, that whole Ferrari. Was that I'm meeting him in Glasgow at the Scottish Cup final next Sunday, so I can only say nice things yeah, about you, Kevin Cassidy. Yeah, very careful, yeah. <laughs> but d- at that time, was that very uncomfortable to be a Donegal fan? Because obviously you want the team to kick on, but then you have this sort of, this internal strife and a player being singled out because of his part in the book and getting... Yeah, it was, it was a mini... Saipan, Roy Keane, Mick McCarthy. Of course, yeah. that was the great civil war. This was a mini civil <laughs> war within the county. Saipan was on another Richter scale, okay? Yeah. Um, yeah, people were divided. Probably more went towards Jim because Donegal went on and won the All Ireland in mm. 2012. And very unfortunate, very unfortunate for Guidoor because you had Neil McGee. Eamon McGee and you had Kevin Cassidy, guys who had travelled from Maharagallon, which is in Guidor, to county training, you know, soldiering through the bad days. And Do you know Eamon and uh, Kevin Cassidy did a piece together in, was it the Star or was it actually a paper in Donegal? I can't remember which, but they did a piece together looking back on it. It's kind of interesting that it took so many years and it's they still hadn't fully kind of uh, talked uh, through it. Be fragile, like because yeah. Guidor, you know, they call themselves the home of football in Donegal as well, and they are. I mean, they have the most championships, so and it's a it's a huge GAA area. And like you mentioned, Eamon McGee and Kevin Cassidy, they're huge characters. People wondered why they got so much attention last year when Guidor won Ulster. These videos because they do it in every town and village in Ireland, but it's because of the characters you're talking about. And I would imagine, yeah, it was it was it would have been very difficult. I think Kevin's over it. Um, he says he's over it. I personally think, you know, it's a hard one to know. It was just uh, Jim McGuinness went on and won in All Ireland um, by draconian measures, no doubt. But his modus operandi was to get Donegal over the line. And look, I think he did want. Ke- I I genuinely believe he. he I, I say looking back, Jim does feel bad on Kevin Cassidy over mm. that, you know. And would you think you'd get over it? No, I don't think deep, so. Deep, deep, deep down, I know he done a thing with news talk, and he said he was over it and that. But I would say deep down, he's still probably a little bit hurt mm. about it. Well, he's, he's his own character. I'm just if you're saying me specifically, no, I don't think I'd ever get over that. But be that as it may, um, I actually mentioned Kevin Cassidy. I go back to that game in 2011, the quarter final against Kildare at Croke Park. I was at that game. Something that really struck me, you know, the last minute winner from Kevin Cassidy, beautiful left footed shot in extra time. The thing that stood out to me that day was actually how partisan the Donegal journalists were in the press box. I'd never seen I'd never seen journalists going so insane celebrating. Were you were you part of that crew? No, I wasn't. I was a spectator that day. The thing about the Donegal journalists and media, there's about five hundred of us. It's a very yeah, competitive yeah. market up there. It's a big county of north, south, east, west and that, but yeah, everybody was behind them. Um Everybody was behind them. And I think, you know, when journalists in Donegal don't have a problem, you know, slating the county team when they need to be, but they would be behind them as well. I think they appreciate that it's an amateur game. I remember Jim Carney in Galway said to me that years ago, he said, I done my first ever commentary for Galway Bay FM, and he said to me, you need to be careful too, you know, this is an amateur organisation. These guys are not on big money, so mm. yes, you can go to town on them, yes, you can give out about them, but even with you, you don't absolutely ridicule somebody. You analyse it summarise it whatever you need to do but we need to always take a step back and these lads are not on big big money and mm. I think I think I think the Donegal media appreciate that you know they all would have started out as fans anyway you grow up playing the game that's that's why you got interested that's in the first place we're all fans of typewriters aren't we that's that's it but we're looking yeah. at in 2020 Donegal are on the cusp if they can win this Ulster title of a first ever Ulster three in a row and like yeah. you said 10 titles ever um, Michael Murphy has lifted half of them as captain. Yeah, but a three in a row would be huge. In three in a row be huge. And Donegal won Ulster in eleven, two thousand and twelve, and were raging hot favourites against mm. Malik O'Rourke Monaghan in two thousand and thirteen. Monaghan were four to one that day, and just everybody was a hot day in Clonus. Like 13, it always seven, is in Clonus. Thirteen seven. Good memory. Well done. Well, no, I'm just looking at. That. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> I didn't know what you were looking at there. No, um, and that was. But Monaghan completely deserved that. They were much mm. the better team from start to finish. So that would be now the next step. And I think there's a feeling, you know, Donegal, Donegal two do- tough groups in the last two years with the Super mm. 8. Some people feel they deserved more from coming out of Ulster. But I think the best route is still 
winning the province and you have that couple of week gap because you mentioned Mayo already you know that struggle of playing seven games in eight yeah, weeks yeah. or something like that and there is a feeling look We'd be spoofing if we were saying any other ways. The winners of Donegal and Tyrone will be hot, hot favourites for mm. Ulster. And I think that is the route to go down. I think the next step is getting out of the Super 8s mm. group. Um, it has to be. That has to be. And I, if this Dublin if this Dublin phenomenon thing ever does come down and there's a vacuum, it's who can actually step up to the next level. Like, Do you see Dublin beating next year? No. Do you, do you think Donegal could be next in line? Like I firmly believe that Dublin's here. I still believe, I know Kerry got to an All-Ireland final. I don't think there's anything between Donegal, Kerry, Tyrone. Be interesting what Park Joyce does in Galway. Can they go to the next level? Mayo. I just think it's skewed too much uh, for Dublin because of the Leinster Championship. And there's a decent chance that... like. There, there's no better team to absolutely pummel a team that's kind of a mid-level. You know, someone yeah. like Ross Common are a very good team, and Donegal will have, I know they didn't in 2018, but generally should have a bit of difficulty beating them, whereas Dublin will absolutely fill at them, and, you know, other, other t- counties that are challengers will probably struggle against those teams, um, and Dublin are just going to come through fresher, and I think just because of their quality, everything combined, I think yeah. it's very hard to actually stop them. And if you keep... Kieran, which has happened, Kieran Kilkenny scoreless, Mannion scoreless, Costler scoreless, Dean Rock will chip in with 1 5, 1 Kyle. 6. And I would imagine they've, you've so many fires to put out, but Kerry could have beat them this year. Mm. They could have beat but them. But they only could have beaten them because they went down to 14 men. They were really gasping for air up until the red card. I th- and I think the second, the second game showed what the first one would have been without the red card. Yeah, and I think another elephant in the room is let's say Dublin right, win 6 or win 7 either. They may go away for a year or two. We could be looking at them coming back when in, like, it may not be as big a deal if even if they are beaten. Could they come back and win another four out of six again? Probably. Could do. That's when it's going to become stale. Mm. That's when it's going to become stale. But what can we do? And Donegal next team in though if they do. I'm hoping so. Look, as I go back to Drew the Kerry game. Kerry. Yeah, true. Kerry. Drew, 120 Kerry, 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 Kerry are missing players as well to be fair. Um, you know, David, David Moore, Moore didn't play that day. Crowley yeah. was obviously out for the years. So they had their injuries as well. Um, but Drew with Kerry in a pulsating game. You enjoyed that one yourself, didn't I did. you? That was, was probably the game of the summer. Yeah, I absolutely love that. I'm very biased, am I? You certainly are. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks very much, Paddy. Thanks, Shane. Good man.